In this video, we're going to highlight the table or we're going to create a table. And what we want to do is to highlight it the moment we hover over a specific data set here. As you can see here, once we hover over it, it will color it. And once we hover away from it, it will remove the color from it. So let's start to explore how to do this. So let's start to explore how to highlight the table row when hovering on the data points in Chart.js. So the first thing what we need to do here is to go to chartjs3.com, getting started with this specific link, which you can also find in the description box. I'm going to copy here the default code, so I'm going to copy this entire chunk of code here. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video, which explains it all. I'm going to paste this all in there, and then we'll cut this out, and then I will put this in here, save it, refresh, there we are. So now we have our basic bar chart, but of course what we want to do is we need a table row. So I'm going to scroll down here. And I'm going to make some tables in here. And I'm going to just a basic HTML version. If you want to have like the dynamic version based on whatever our JavaScript code has in Chart.js, I have a video for that individually, but it's a quite extensive one. So I will not redo that one. But if you want to know how to do it dynamically, Watch that specific video, I will show you later on the link. Now basic in essence, if you want to find it, it's in YouTube, you can just search here uh, how to create a table from a data set in Chart.js, which is quite interesting as well, fully dynamic. So what we're going to do here is just the basic version. So in here, I'm going to see here table tag. And in this table tag, I'm going to make a T head, which is a table head. And then in the table head, I'm going to say table row. And then eventually here's uh, th for the data. And then in here, basically, we'll, I'll just make three simple columns here. Uh, first one would be maybe the uh, label. And then the second would be the value. And third one would be maybe a percentage or something or target. Let's say target. Of course, this is just made up here. So once I did this, I'm going to copy, well, almost. I just copied this one here, or not even. I'm going to say a t body. And then instead of copying, because we need to make separate items here, all right, so in here we have the table row. Then here, TD, table data. So this one, can we can copy two more times, paste it in there, paste it in there. And then the first one would be, for example, in our case, Monday. It's Monday, like you say, you're 18, and then any, any other value that you want. So I'm just going to say you're 10. And I will not spend too much time on that. All I will do is just to duplicate this a few more times. Let's see here we have this, that's three. We need it seven times in total, four, five, six, seven. All right, so it'll be Sunday, Saturday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, and finally Tuesday. All right, so the numbers I will just ignore. So it's not, not really necessary, but you can imagine the structure of it. So what I want to do here, just very basic, is to give it at least some design. So what I'm going to do here is I, uh, I guess here we can do here, the table, comma, table hat, comma, table row, comma, table data. And then what I will do, I will just do a very basic one. I'll say with 100%. Secondly, what I want to do here is I say padding everywhere will be 10%, for 10 pixels. And say your border, one pixel, solid black. Save that, refresh. All right, so you can see we are a bit more extensive. And you can see here this uh, border is this, basically this additional padding. It is basically what we need to do here is a border collapse. So it's a border collapse. There we are. And then we can say here collapse so that everything will overlap on top of each other. So it's more concise. And then you realize that we have a lot of space or at least is too big, so I'm going to reduce this to 500 pixels a chart, and then this makes again a full screen that fits in the screen as well. All right, so what I want to do is when I hover here, I want to make sure that this bar is being or this row table row is being colored with this background color, and of course, this one should be when I hover on this one. That would mean that we need to communicate with the canvas with the table here, and we need to make sure that once we hover on one specific element, it should understand which element exactly we're hovering. So you can pinpoint the right one. So let's start to work with this. So what I want to do now is here, now we're going to start with the JavaScript here, and then we're going to do here a new 
function and this function we can call it our basically our uh, mouse move handler and why mouse move because we're not dealing here with a uh, hoover you might say well we're hoovering on the element and the answer is yes we are hoovering however hoover would mean completely on the entire tag and what is the entire tag well that's the canvas itself so this here will be considered as a hoover but also here is a hoover and here is a hoover because we're still on the canvas so that's why we need to do a mouse move and then we analyze what is the coordinates the x and y co uh, coordinates of our mouse it's basically our position of our mouse and are we within the specific coordinates of these four lines here and if that is the answer yes in that case show this tooltip but also show the specific color that we want to have and to do this would mean the following we need to figure out then our mouse move position on the canvas itself so we have this function here the mouse move handler and basically let's do a console log first and we can say here uh, uh, yes and then of course what we want to do now is because we want to trigger this how do we trigger this well when we're moving within the canvas to do that i need to pinpoint the canvas and that's basically this uh, element id to and we can do this easily by just by saying here my chart dot canvas dot on mouse move equals the mouse move handler save this if i refresh now open up developer tab then if i hover you can see here it will show every time yes so that will mean that it's now communicating if i hover here doesn't but if i hover here again you can see here it's always say yes so it recognizes the movement so that's the first step so now what we need to do is not only recognize the movement it should now start to recognize are we on this element that element that element or more specifically trigger only when we are one of these elements that's step number two basically so how do we do that now in chart.js they have a built-in functionality and we're going to use that right now so what this is the following let's say your constant and let's say your points and we're going to say here my chart dot and then this is a specific command from chart.js so follow along so they get elements at event for mode and this basically means the following we want to trigger the the trigger uh, we want to have a trigger event on mouse move and we want to do this or we want, once we trigger it what well, uh, which element are we going to get all right so what we want to do here now is to specify that and i realize that what we need to do here is to record that mouse move because we'll be needing this and this is just basically the mouse move event the x and y coordinates specifically so then we're going to say here x and y coordinates because these are the x and y coordinates and then we're going to say here when we hover or when we mouse move here and our cursor is nearest nearest of one of these elements and more specifically not only nearest but it should trigger on intersect and then we're going to say here true intersect true and then we set this one true as well and what this means is basically intersect think about an intersection or a crossroad so when you cross the road you have to, or two roads are crossing each other they're intersecting each other so in other words for intersect is just like the hovering of the tooltip the moment i touch this specific bar we're intersecting the bar because we're hitting the bar or we're we're crossing that border here within and then we are within that element and then the the tooltip shows up the moment we're moving away from it then you can see it will disappear once we don't touch it anymore so this means is intersect when we touch the element in that case the nearest element should show in this case the nearest element is the purple one this will be that green etc etc so this here will give us a lot of information so let me show you exactly what i'm talking about i do here now a console log i'm going to say here let's grab this points save that refresh all right and then if i hover over it look at what's happening and then maybe uh let's see is the console log? Oh, that's the one all right so that's fine let's refresh again let me show you you can see here we're getting now the data here what we get is the data set index and we get the index itself but if we're on the white space and scroll down here you can see here the white space and then we get nothing and the reason why we get nothing is because we're not intersecting any element but here if we go here we, we get it again and you can see here once we move away from it it disappears but here you can see here what we get we even get the index 
of it, which is number four, which is correct because the purple one is number four because this is zero, one, two, three, four. Remember, an array has zero base calculation, so this is zero as starting point. This is number four. So now we have these index values, and this is very important for us. So now what we can do is the following. What I want to do here is we're going to get these, uh, these points, and then I'm going to say here the if statement. I want to show this only if points as a a index of one element by minimum. If that is the case, in that case, I want to say console log points. All right, save that, refresh, and now we can see here it will only trigger if we are on the element. And if we're not on the element, it's like the tooltip, it will not show at all. This is very important because that is how we can now communicate here. So what I'm going to do next is once we have this, we need to get the index. So if you look at how we get the specific index, you can see here, it's just points zero dot index. So I'm going to say yeah, points zero dot index. If I save this now, refresh, there we are, six, and then we are here, it's five, four, and then this should be zero, there we are. So we get all of these numbers, and now we have the most important information that we can start working with. So what I want to do now is, with this, we can basically get two items. First of all, let's say here, constant index equals index, or basically points index. Secondly, I want to say constant color equals, how do you get the color here? So to get this, let me show you again. We're going to do a console log. And what I want to do here with a console log, I'm going to say here just char. Save that, refresh. Uh, all right, sorry, this is of course not possible, but we need to do here because what I want to get here is not the chart, but I need to get the my chart. Why my chart? Because we're outside of this specific coding block. We are here independently. That's why you have this here, of course. Save that, do that one. Now we should have all the information here. Click on this. And then what I need is basically the colors. So if I scroll down here, we get here the data object. And if you look at what is the data object, it's basically this one here. What I really want is just the color here. Once we know which color we have based on our index, we can extract the matching color. So we're going to go here in the data. And you can recognize the same pattern, data sets, data set index zero. And then here we're going to search for the data. And then, or sorry, not the data, sorry. The, no, is it the border? No, background color. The background color, and you can see here as well the value. So how do we get here? Well, we can say here from data dot data sets index zero dot background color. All right, remember that. So I'm going to say here dot data dot data sets index zero dot background color, and the background color here will be of course based on the index. So once we have this and I save this, refresh. Move over here, now we get the colors that we want. You can see here, now we're extracting exactly the colors, and now we can assign these colors nicely into our table here. So now we have our color, so basically what I want to do next is I want to cut this up. You can put that in here. And then we can now start to assign on the table row. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, remember, we're going to pinpoint the table rows here and specifically the table body tr every row of within this table body should be highlighted so i'm going to scroll down here and i'm going to work on this now so in here i'm going to say the following i'm going to indicate here uh, let's see here we can say here constant tr body which are table row body and then what i want to do here is a document dot query selector all and then here you're going to say t body space tr what this really does is the following it will say search in our html document for the query or well basic query means search at the selector and selector is basically the tr or the body tag etc etc so we're going to say here search for specifically this body tag first or this tag and then within this tag, these here, we want to select them all. So what will happen is we should have now seven. So we have a node list of seven right now. So I'm going to say this, and if I do here console log, tr body, save that, refresh, and then here you can see here we get a node list and an 
every one of these. And if I hover over, look what happens. It will understand exactly which one we need or which one it uh, selects. So that would mean with this index here, these numbers here of the nodes, the node list, which looks very similar to an array, but it's not an array, because it's slightly more deeper. Because you can see here, there is not only information or there's like all kind of special features in here that is basically related to the HTML element. But what I want to do here is just to assign a color at that moment, depending on the item. So what I'm going to do here is, that we have this here, the TR body, all right? Then what I'm going to do in here, enter, and then I'm going to say here, TR body. And then we're going to say here, what exactly I want, because we have here an index. It's very similar. We're going to grab this, we say the index here. Then I'm going to say here, style, and we say here, background color equals whatever the color would be. Well, in this case, we have this one here, so it should not be a string because it's a variable. So we're going to do it like this. If we save this, refresh, we move over, there you are. And if we move over this, you can see here now the colors are showing up. However, if you move away, it is this, it's not disappearing. So what we need to do now is to figure out how do we disappear this. Well, quite straightforward, what we can do here in the TR, it's a default. I'm going to say here by default. TR body, all of them, basically every one of them, we're going to say here, TR body, and I say dot for each, for every specific item. Then I'm going to say here, the arrow function expression. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through them, and when I loop through them, I want to make them every time, on move, every time uh, transparent, unless it matches this condition. If it matches this condition, it will give it the color by default. So what I'm going to say here, curly braces and then in here we say this tr body or uh, well basically it's the tr so i'm going to reference as a tr i'm going to say here um for each tr i'm going to say tr dot style dot background background color and then this background color will be you can do white transparent whatever you want so i'm going to always just do it on transparent but you could do it white maybe would be more appropriate. So let's save that, refresh, and if we hover over it, there we are, but then we move away, there you are. As you can see, now if I have this, look how exciting this is. Absolutely beautiful. So this is basically the way how you can play around and communicate with the canvas and the table row nicely. So if you want, after this, you said, well, I would like to make this more dynamic. In that case, I'm going to recommend you to watch this one you how to create a table from a data set in charge where you create a dynamic table and then with that combined together it will work absolutely phenomenal